but everything that surrounds the whole muscle. There is, there is uh, epimysium. There is epimysium. Okay? All right, epimysium. And eventually, the epimysium becomes what? It turns into what? Fascia. The fascia eventually becomes the tendon. Look at it. This is the epimysium. Okay, eventually becomes, we have, becomes the fascia. All the fascia somehow lies on it. Fascia eventually becomes what? The tendon. Which joins the what? Okay. All right, good. Good with that. So that's the fascia. It surrounds everything, becomes the tendon. All right. Again, when we take a look at it under the microscope, you see, these are individual muscle fiber. Individual muscle fiber, individual muscle fiber. But the group of it, this way, that is what's, that's the vast fascicle, the bundle. Okay? All right. So there are ways that some muscles are shaped. Muscles are shaped based on the direction of what we call the fibers or their fascicles, the direction. The direction. Okay? So, and this also helps in the action. Sort of tells about what action they're going to produce. All right? So, for instance, the fusiform, fusiform, we're going to be going back and forth also. The fusiform muscles, what is it? They are thick in the middle and at their end, they taper out. Look at it. So, they are thick in the middle. So, the thickness in the middle, we call it, we call it the bay of it. Then they taper out as tendons, as tendons. Okay? An example of this is what is the biceps, biceps muscles. That's an example of what we call the biceps break Okay, all right. Okay, the next one, the parallel muscles, the parallel. The parallel muscles talks about that each, all of these vascicles, remember when we're talking about vascular, we're talking about muscle bundles, right? So they are wrapped in the same direction, in the same direction, uniformly. Uniformly in the same direction. Look at it. These are the bundles. They are wrapped in the same direction. Okay. So an example of this is what is the rectus abdominis in our abdomen. What we call the uh, one of the abs muscles. Okay. All right. Triangular. They, are, they look like what triangle, which means they are broad at the base. And at the lower end, it tapers out. Okay? So what type of muscle is this? Pectoralis gladio. That's one of the chest muscles. Okay? The other one is unipendix. Or let's call it pendant muscles, generally. Pendant muscles. Like a feather. Shaped like a feather. Alright? Part of the pendant is unipendix. Which means, the vesicles, they only have its in one side. Unipendix. So you have the vascular on one side going, bundle up on one side, then narrows down. Okay, like a feather. All right? It's just like you have a whole, a complete feather, but you slice it. Okay? Now, the bipedis, they spring up, they, they spring out. You can see they spring out, they spring out, they spring out. So they taper at one end. The multipenis, multipenis means you have bundle of feathers which come together and converge into what? To one area, they have one tapered end. An example of that is what? Deltoid muscle. It's on top of the shoulder. Because when you look at it, it's almost like you got the whole thing, then things up. Okay? All right? Now, the circular muscles, the circular muscles are majorly what? Sphincters. They are majorly sphincters. Which means they form rings around an opening. Form a ring around that opening. Okay? So, this is what? Like the eye. So, these are the rings. Like a ring. Like a ring. Like a ring. Well, this is the opening. Okay? So, they are majorly for sphincters. From a ring around an opening. Majorly for sphincters. Alright? Okay, everybody cool? Alright. So, there is what we call muscle compartments. Muscle compartments is when we have a group of muscles in which they function similarly, then they are what they are surrounded by what we call a fascia, a group of muscles in which they function similarly. They are surrounded by what a fascia. That fascia is the outer covering, the most outer covering. All right. Now, for instance, look at it. We're looking at it here. 
the muscle of the leg. When we slice it horizontally, we have the anterior part, the lateral compartment, medial compartment, and posterior compartment. Why? Because in movements of the ankle, it helps in the flexion or extension or inversion or inversion. What is inversion and eversion? What is going in what? What is going outwards? Your foot, your ankle, your foot. Could it be your foot or missing it? Oh, well, yeah, okay, the foot, okay. All right, use, somebody use the hand to demonstrate it for me. Okay, I, I need a good, I need, I need you guys to do it for me very well. Use, use the hand. Uh huh. Like yes, inward, outward, exactly. So all of those group of muscles, we have to do all those. So we have the anterior compartment, which is right here. We have the lateral right here. We have the posterior back, and we have the media compartments. Okay, they are bound together by what by fascia. And inside this, we have the blood vessels and so on. We're going to see what we call um, compartment syndrome. Compartment syndrome in the sense that when any of those blood vessels is ripped, either due to injury, so the blood leaks and surround particularly a particular compartment. So the presses on the muscle, which could be very painful, we still see. Okay, that. Has anybody heard about that before? Compartment syndrome in which somebody has a rib, something? Okay, all right. We understand. All right, so very important. All right, so there are ways that muscles are attached. Okay, you guys are going to be a little bit, we're going to go like 10 to 10 after. I know you guys have much, much more break this time around. All right, so there are ways that muscles are attached to the bone. Remember that muscles are attached to the bone primarily. But we're going to see later on that sometimes muscles they get attached to themselves. Or muscles are attached to the subcutaneous. Okay, it's not 100% that all muscles are attached to the bone. Okay. But when they get attached to the bone, that is the way that they are attached, all right? So they are attached to the bone, so the indirect attachment to the bone is through the tendon, muscle to bone, through the tendons, okay? All right? So we have another way through which they can also get attached, what we call aponeurosis. In this type of attachment, the tendon, instead of it being something like this, but it's what is flat. It's flat and what and broad. Okay? An, an example of that is a tendon that we have on the palm. On the palm. That we call it palma aponeurosis. So anytime you hear it aponeurosis, it is broad and flat. Okay? But the conventional one is the tendon. I mean the tendons, which is almost like directly to the muscles, okay? It's another way, all right? But this time around, it is broader and flat, all right? Another one is retinaculum, all right? We have a group of tendons in which they have been separated, okay? The, a type of connective tissue band in which the tendons is separate from the muscles as they pass under. The same way, we have it on around here, what we call retinaculum. There are groups of tendons that are coming, they pass right underneath, underneath. If there is a problem with that tendon, it can cause what is this? Uh, 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 Carpal tunnel. Carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome. Because when that tendon is kind of inflamed, it presses on the nerves around there, so the patient feels the whole lot of pain there. Okay, it's not All right. So that's indirect attachments. Indirect attachments. Okay. All right. The direct attachments means. There is a what a little separation between the muscle and the bone. A little separation between the muscle and the bone. Right? So they come almost like they come directly from the bone. That's direct attachment. The main point is there is a little separation between the muscle and the bone. What helps? So that's the tendon that is going to the bone. It doesn't keep irritating the bone. The boss keeps it on. You guys know that, right? Yes, they keeps, keeps it free so that it doesn't get irritated by sliding on the ball. So, very important. Okay? Very, very important. All right. So, muscles 
the way they are in, they, the way they are attached to the bone, there are ways that they are attached to the bone. We always say it's through tendons. But that is what we call origin, belly, and insertions. Origin is where the muscle is actually originated from. The belly is that part of is that part of the muscle that is going to help, is going to contract and cause the action. And the action is where it's going, insertion. Okay? So origin is the starting points. The belly, that's the thicker, the thicker part of the muscle where the contraction is actually taking place. Insertion is where it's going to get attached to. Okay? And where the action of the muscle is going to be carried out. Yes. So in the diagram that you have there, uh, like for instance the, the bicep. Well, this one, yeah. There's tendons on both sides, but how do you how do you, how do you tell which one is the origin and which one is the insertion? Because it looks like it's from both sides. Good, good. All right. So the way you're going to tell is where is the action taking place? For instance, it's coming from this part of the humerus. But it gets like the uh, the biceps get attached to what to raise.